Hi folks, I'm coming to you directly from my basement today. We are going to start some seeds. Yes, it's that time of year and here in Minnesota, we're about 10 weeks out from planting in the garden time. So that means it's time to get our seeds started. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of all the things that you need, which isn't quite a lot, to get your seeds growing yourself. And if you'd like the book to learn all of it and have it all in one handy place, go over to our website, www.seedstartingbook.com and you can grab our book that talks about everything you need, how to do it, and all the ins and outs of getting seeds growing in your own house. What we use. It's pretty simple as I mentioned and as you can see I'm in my basement which used to be my kids playroom. We still have the foosball table and that's what I'm setting up my seeds on. I just put a piece of plywood on it, covered it up with some plastic to kind of contain all the soil and water and keep everything in one spot. I have just a few basic things which you probably already have in your house. For starters you need a grow light. I am just using a plain shop light. This has two fluorescent bulbs in it. It's a really basic shop light. It's the one I use in my garden shed during the planting season. So I just bring it indoors when it's time to plant seeds. I have it on an adjustable chain so you can raise or lower it. When the seeds start, we'll wanna keep it close to them at about four to six inches. And as they get bigger, we'll raise it up. Um, you can buy LED grow lights. You can also buy LED bulbs to fit in a shop light. A lot of people have started using that now for seed starting. I don't think it's that essential to what you're doing. I've been using this setup for a long time and it works just great. I also use a big cookie sheet tray. This is what I set my pots on that can, keeps the water and the soil in one spot. These are the pots that I've been using for a few years. These are eco paper pots. They come in a kit with uh, bamboo stick plant tags. So that's handy to be able to mark. But I really like these pots because they're made from recycled paper. So they're super sustainable. They're also porous, permeable, have holes in the bottom. So water does not sit in these pots at all. Doesn't cause any kind of sogginess or mold to grow on the soil. Um, it also lets air get in and out, which helps keep the soil not too moist and is good for the root system. It also goes straight into the garden, so that means I don't have to disturb the roots of this plant. As soon as the plants are ready to be planted, I can put this whole pot straight into the garden. And during the summer, it will just biodegrade natu naturally and actually offer a little compost in my garden so it's good for my garden too but it's really good for the plants they get the least amount of transplant shock they barely even know that they've moved the other great thing about these pots is it is not peat which peat pots are made from harvested peat bogs which are a really important carbon sink for our environment but the harvesting of them is damaging them and it takes them a long time to recover and of course it's light years better than plastic which we know ends up in landfills. So those are the pots I use. Then what else? I have a timer. I put that timer on my light so that way I can set the timer to go or the light rather to, to be on for 12 to 14 hours a day and I don't have to worry about it. I know it will come on and off like it should be and that's what your plants like. They don't need 24 hour sunlight or light. They need um, light that is 12 to 14 hours a day so you can give them a little bit of darkness too. And here is a water bottle. What I use is one that has an adjustable spray nozzle on it. And that way I can start out with a really light mist when I first plant the seeds so that way it doesn't flood the seeds around in the soil and then once the seeds germinate and once the plants grow I can just increase the amount of water that I'm giving them. Also just a point here I use unsoftened tap water so if you have access to water that's not softened you choose that because the plants in the soil really don't like the salt that's in that. If you have to use it it won't kill them but they'll do better if they can just have straight tap water. And then I just choose a really basic seed starting mix. 
I like this one. I've used it for the last few years. It really works. The plants love it. And again, if you can see down here, it's made from coconut coir, which is a great alternative to peat, a little more sustainable, still feeds the plants and the roots like it. And it also holds enough water so they don't dry out. That's the other thing when you're planting in such a small pot, you do have to stay on top of watering because it will dry out if you're not careful or if you use the wrong soil. And it is important to use a regular seed starting mix. Don't be tempted to go grab soil from your garden or planting mix that you have left over from last year. That is not proper for seed starting. This is a little bit lighter and it really gives the seeds a good start. So that's really all you need. Seed starting mix, a water spray bottle, a timer, which you don't really have to have, a decent light that will cover your plants. Of course, a marker to mark the plant tags, which are in here, make sure you do that. And pots. Well, and I also should mention the seeds. Obviously, whatever you like to grow, you can grow. Here's why I choose these seeds. I grow flowers that I will plant in my pots. So this saves me a bunch of money. If you look at a list sum, look at that. A seed packet is $1.49. When you know a four pack of grown plants is probably $2.50 or $3 or more. And if you think about how many you use in a summer, I probably buy, before I started growing them from seed, I would buy three flats of alyssum and I would also buy two or three flats of port Porulaca because I like to put those in my pots. And then the other thing I like to grow are my favorite herbs, which in our family it's parsley and basil. We love both of those. And lavender is another herb technically, but I put it in all my pots and my window boxes because here's a little tip, it repels mosquitoes. And then I like to grow the vegetables that I put in pots too. So I have cabbage, tomato, bell pepper, hot pepper, and then spinach is the last one, which really that's just fun to grow because you get to see it grow quick. It will germinate fast and you'll have little spinaches very quickly. And the one great thing about growing seeds from start and plants is that I know the input of everything that goes into my plants. I know that they're organic to start with. I know the growing process is organic. And then I know as they're growing, there's no pesticides, there's no herbicides, there's no insecticides. These are as organic as you can get. So that's it. You can see it really doesn't require a bunch. All you really need are the pots and a shop light, which I think most of us have, a way to water and that's it. Now if you'd like a lot more information, obviously I've kind of skimmed through it, but if you really want to get the scoop and how to start from scratch and succeed and get your plants growing and planted in your garden, make sure and go over to our uh, website at seedstartingbook.com. You can grab the book there. It shows you everything you need to know. You can download it and be ready to plant as soon as you get your seeds. Thanks and be sure to check back. I'll show a video in the next couple days on how to plant the seeds and then we'll follow the growth along as the season goes. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.